Hello there. If you're watching this video, you're probably in one of two situations. You're a subscriber to the channel, and if you are, thank you for that. Or you've stumbled across this video because you're looking for a way to transfer some old home movie tapes onto something digital and something modern and digital, not DVD-R or a DVR, but you want to transfer it into something that you can share on the internet or send to a family member, that sort of thing. Well, if you have as much as I have here, which is the camcorder, the device, you have the power supply for it, you have some tapes, and you have the original audio video connection cables that go from the camera to the television or from the VCR or laser display or whatever it happens to be, then you only need one more thing. And there's a bunch of different things out there you can buy, but I'm gonna pick one of them and I'm gonna show you the one I've picked. And then we're gonna actually transfer a home movie live and then I'm going to show you what that video looks like after it's been transferred. So you can decide for yourself if this is something worth investing in. Let's get started. So again, there's a lot of these devices out there on the internet that you can buy. I've chosen to go with the Cloner Alliance. So this particular little box will take all of your retro tech, all your retro video formats and transfer them to a flash drive. And then you can take that flash drive, put it in your computer, you can edit up the video, you can make changes to it, and so forth. This particular device comes with the power cord, it comes with a remote, so that you can remote control it from your couch after you made your masterpiece. You can actually use this to show it off. Uh, this particular one has HDMI in and out, so you can do it as a pass-through. It's got a connector to connect it to your PC to do firmware updates. Power connectors right there. It's even got connections for line in, line out, and a microphone. So you can actually narrate your video as you're transferring it over. Of course, that's where you're gonna plug in your USB flash drive. It's got some weight to it. It doesn't feel totally and completely cheap in your hands and it looks kind of nice as well. So I like that. The multimedia interface that's on the back here, that's the center connector, has all of these ports on it. You can do composite, you can do VGA, and you can do component. So take an old component HD video source like WVHS or Muse LaserDisc and transfer it over to uh, something like this, okay? Maybe even DVHS. Some of you out there probably have DVHS in your library. So let's go ahead and just go through this process. Let's hook up the camera, let's get it hooked up to the TV, and let's transfer something over. It's gonna be super simple, so stay with me. Okay, so first let's go ahead and plug in the power connector. It's gonna go on the back right here. Plugs in there. And then we're gonna connect our TV or our monitor. And that's gonna go into this output here. And then we're gonna connect our multimedia interface cable where it says MMN or something similar. That connects right there. And then just set it down. Keep it ready to go. And let's go ahead and take this flash drive plug it into the USB port on the side right there. Now we're gonna hook up our camera. So again, make sure that your camera has power. So go ahead and plug it into the power outlet. Again, we've got our connector, audio video connector, and that plugs into this port here on the side of this camera. It goes into AV out. So AV out goes there. Then I'm gonna plug this into my color-coded cables over here. So we got white, we got yellow, and we've got red. So we're all hooked up now. As far as the camera, the camera is connected. This is connected to the TV. All of our connections are done. Now we get to do the video transfer. Go ahead and power on your TV and then uh, make sure it's on the right input on the side on here. So on this, it's HDMI. And of course it says not support. So it's probably the resolution. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the 720p output here on the front. There it goes and it says, okay, yeah, I'll support that. All right, next thing, let's go ahead and put in a tape and I'm actually gonna share with you guys a whole movie I made when I was much younger of my mom and my grandma when they were much younger. Okay, 
right? Make sure your camera is on player, not record or camera, all right? So in this case, I've got it on player. Now, the next thing I need to do is make sure the input for the HDML Cloner Alliance device is set to AV. So I'm just gonna press AV right here in my remote. And that should show me what is going on. Down here it shows me AV and it shows NTSC. If we go into our home button there, it's got some settings in there. You can set the time, that way your date and time stamp on the uh, video is the accurate thing to do. And you can also just change your bit rate. I'm gonna go ahead and go with this limited 16M. That's the setting I'm gonna go with, okay? I'm not gonna explain what that is. Let's just go with it. All right, so again, back to AV. Go ahead and rewind your tape in case it hasn't been rewound in a while. Sometimes it's good to rewind it all the way or fast forward it all the way to the end and then back to the beginning again, kind of loosen up the tape a little bit. Now I'm gonna just go ahead and hit play here. And uh, we should see an image begin to appear. There it is. And I'll go ahead and crank up the volume. So there's my mom talking on there. All right, everything looks good here. So let's go ahead and rewind it. Go ahead and hit stop. Okay, I know that's the part of the tape I'm gonna play. Not every tape is gonna start from the beginning. Sometimes you might wanna find the spot that you wanna start recording at. And then watch this. It's as easy as hitting the record button, which is right here on the top left side. Bing! Shows here on the top, it's recording. Of course, we're getting the flashing HDML light here on the top. So that is my late stepfather. He is no longer with us. He has passed on. This is my grandmother. I'm taping now. You're taping? Oh, yeah. good. That is my mom. Sure. What are you going to put on it? Should we use real play? Look here, Brad. Oh, boy. Does that look scrunchy? Mm. Mm. What is it? Mm. Damn, damn. Fried lobster tails, right? Hey. So, so this was Thanksgiving in 1994. And... Uh, so this is a great example of, a, I believe this is a Hi8 tape, if I remember correctly. I don't even remember uh, being able to afford a Hi8 video camera back then. But uh, this was a very simple Thanksgiving. It was literally just me, my mom, my stepdad, and my grandmother. That was all we had as family to eat Thanksgiving dinner together. Pretty crazy. And my stepdad's sitting there talking about how he uh, couldn't find a place to buy a cup of coffee because everything was closed that day, which I don't know why you couldn't just make coffee at home. Oh, and look, he's watching Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. It's a good old movie. All right, I think you've seen enough footage at this point, so let's go ahead and hit stop on our recording here. So let's go ahead and hit the stop button up here in the corner. All right, and then the HDML light will stop flashing. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video over here. And then what I'm gonna do is take this out, put it in my computer, and put it directly as part of this video edit for this YouTube video so that you can check out the quality and you can let me know what you think. Smile, Bernie. You're on she candy made, camera. Yeah, her husband got a job in uh, Arkansas, I think. I don't know You're on candy camera. They moved. Had to put their house up for sale, and a week and a half later it sold. I'm well, taping you. She was going home every day and painting and stuff, so I imagine it was in good shape. Wow. Hi, Brad. Hi. <laughs> I'm taping now. You're taping? Oh, yep. good. You're going to watch me set the table? Sure. Let's what are you going to put on it? Should we use real play? Look here, Brad. Oh, boy, does that look scrunchy? Mm, what is it? Mm, damn, damn. 
fried lobster tails, right? Hey. Fried lobster fried tails. Fried lobster tails. That should be yummy. Deep fried lobster tails. Deep fried. You want this yeah. on the table? Well, as they say, the proof is in the pudding. So you can see that the quality of that video is really good, especially for an old analog NTSC formatted tape. And uh, before I let you go, if you're a little bit geeky, you can hang around and I'll show you a couple more things that this Cloner Alliance will do. If this is all you needed, then you can move on. Let me show you some of these uh, menus that are on this thing. So I'm gonna go here, if you hit the right, arrow here on the remote it shows you different picture modes which is kind of neat and you can also change your color temperature your aspect ratio here you have a sound mode and you can actually set an equalizer to customize the sound quality of this little box we have uh, on-screen display language we have restore it to factory if you've gone in you've really messed it up just restore it to factory uh, we can do our on-screen display transparency. We can tell it how long we want the on-screen display to stay on the screen, etc. Again, we're back at system time. So, uh, so yeah, there's the date on today. Yep, today is October 21st, 2019. And uh, it's back to the future day as I am making this recording. So some of the other features that you'll see on the remote here Notice this is the Cloner Alliance Pro that we're using because there is a regular Cloner Alliance box as well. Uh, we've got two resolutions here, 720p, 1080p. Uh, we've got the PC input there. Um, actually, what is that PC? Oh, it's PC resolution. That's what that is. Yeah, 1024 by 768. If you actually wanted to play something from your computer, you would either use this VGA button here or this HDMI button. This YPBPR, that is component video. And of course, AV is the yellow connector. Then you can set the, uh, the size of the screen. You can do 4.3 or you can do 16.9. So 4.3 is usually the aspect ratio that some of these old recordings are made in. It's the boxy look. Um, so we've got... Uh, so microphone input volume here, volume playback here, stop, record, etc. Delete, you can go back through your recording and play it back. In fact, if you want to see that, I'll go ahead and put my flash drive back in. Plug that back in. And then I'll hit the playback button. With the playback, it divides it up into the different types of media that you can have on there. You can have text files, music files, photos, and film. It calls it film. It's actually video, but we'll go with film. That's nice. Then I can go in, arrow over, play back my video. Smile, Bernie. You're on Candy's camera. It's got a, uh, a little camera button up here at the top. You can make a little uh, screenshot of whatever you're watching. It's kind of cool too. So you can just take stills, video stills, rather than actually making the whole video. Well, I told you it was going to be short and simple, and it is. So I appreciate you watching. I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, please share it with a friend. You can subscribe to the channel at any time. Leave a comment below. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And you can be a Patreon contributor. If you'd like to buy me a cup of coffee, you can do that through Patreon. And we will see you next time for the next great Retro Tech video. This program is brought to you by the following Patreon contributors. Become a contributor at patreon.com forward slash databits and by viewers like you. Thank you.